Hi everyone, and I hope you're well. I discussed in my last video that uh, I'd been working on some big projects and collaborations and I'd been really busy of late. Well, this is one of the videos I've been planning to make for some time. Uh, actually been working on this project for several weeks now and um, it's about time I finalised it and uh, showed you what I was up to. So I've been doing a collaboration with Joe Navarra and we've been working on a very faint target called the Medulla Nebula, also Abel 85 it's known as. So um, Joe mentioned the, the target. I thought it looked amazing and really was excited in giving it a go. He'd already been working on it. So that's what this video is going to be all about. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, we do have an interesting target to show you at the end. So my name's Glenn and you're watching Astrobloke. Wow, 89 hours of data, 89, and it's still not enough. It's still not enough. It, there's just not enough detail, especially around the oxygen area. What can I do? I don't know if I can get much more data on this by myself. Hmm. I know, I know. I got this. I got this. Yeah, I got this. Right, that's that set. <coughs> oh. oh, it's Joe. Hey, Glenn. Hi, Joe. How are you, mate? How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm really good. So, uh, what are you up to? Hey. Would you like to do a collaboration with me? Yeah, Joe, I'd love to do a collaboration. Have you got something in mind? Cool, cool. Hey, um, I was looking at Able 85. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but uh, a lot of people call it the Medulla Nebula. Um. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a good idea. Um, I've never heard of that. I've I've never actually shot that target before. Um, I've obviously I'm at twelve hundred millimeters. I'd have to check my field of view, of course. Actually, I've already checked for you, and it fits. So you're good to go. Oh man, <laughs> what's my life come to? Now I've got both you and my wife telling me how to do things. Well, we do know what's best for you, man. Hey, besides that, there's a lot of sulfur in this target, and I know you've been wanting to do some sulfur imaging. Oh, yeah, man. Since I got that new um, Antlia S2, I really want to check it out. So if there's a load of sulfur in the target, that'll be really good. Awesome, man. We'll knock it out of the park, dude. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, an American expression. Yeah. Oh man, that'll be great. I can't wait. Let's, uh, let's do it. Hi Joe. So I've got the uh, CT10 on my EQ6R Pro and I'm going to be using the 294mm uh, Pro camera uh, with the ZWO filter wheel and in there I'm going to be using the 3 nanometer uh, chroma filters of uh, HA and um, O3 and I've got my new Antlia 3 nanometer S2 and um, I've actually seen a sub of the S2 of the uh, Medulla Nebula um, which and it really does show some nice detail almost the same as the HA so I'm really excited about that so it's a very faint target as we both know um, but I'm getting some subs, so fingers crossed we'll get something really nice.
Hey, Glenn. Hey, Joe. How are you, mate? I'm okay. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks, mate. I've uh, been working on this uh, little project of ours. How are you getting on with it? Oh, me too. Um, it's it's awesome, actually. Um, yeah, I've gotten this. <laughs> it's amazing how much I've gotten in, in a, such a small amount of time. This is going to be one of our my best images ever. Are you, are you, are you not finding it a, a bit of a faint target? Eh, eh, not at all, man. It, it's well, not faint at all. Really? Oh. Uh, not for me. It must be my dark skies. Oh, uh, them, them again, eh? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'll keep going with it. I've got, I've got something, but it's very faint. I'm, I'm working hard on it. I'm surprised to hear that you've got. What, what, what is it? Really strong? What in all, all the channels? Oh yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's all. Yeah. I can't believe people have such a hard time with this target. Okay, Joe. Yeah. If you say so, mate. Right. So, um, uh, so what? Uh, were you, what was you using? Your edge. You know what? I, could, I ended up I couldn't use my edge. Um, the field of view was all wrong, so I had to switch over to my Z eighty one. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, and, and now I'm in bin one mode on the two ninety four, so the files are huge. I was going to say they are. Yeah, they're going to be big, aren't they? Yeah, but I'm going to have to crop in to match your twelve hundred millimeters, so I had to use bin one. Yeah, yeah, the twelve hundred it fits in, like you said. Thank you very much for the guidance. Um, ah, sure. It's really nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> if great. you didn't know better, you'd think that I had thought this all up before I called you. Huh? It's fantastic. My wife dresses me, and you run my hobby, so everything's <laughs> sorted. I don't need to think about much. It's really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's all gone really well. As I say, I got the two nine four, and then I'm using the new filter that uh, Antlia S two that I recently bought. Um, oh, and I'm actually getting some structure with that. In fact, uh, I'm not. Sh it's almost better than the HA on this target. I don't know if this target is rich in S2 or what. I've noticed that. Yeah, hmm. it, it, it's all got a lot of S2. Okay. As a matter of fact, it's it's going to be kind of interesting to see how we can um, differentiate it in between, so we don't just have a bunch of red. Mm, well, some of the nice versions that I've seen online of it are, are, are got a sort of an orangey red look about them, which I think looks really nice. And, and why do they call it the medulla? It, to me, it looks more like a like a garlic bulb. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I hadn't seen that. I, I I flipped mine upside down. I thought it looked like an old man's ball sack. Personally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I have heard it actually referred to as a deflated balloon. Oh. Which is actually an old man's ball sack, isn't it? I mean, let's, be honest. Yeah. let's be honest. Let's be honest. Being an old you, man, you, 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 know. you can't you can't see just me, right? I mean, you, that's all you can see of me, right? Yeah. Else? No, no, no. You're okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could just about see NASA. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> this way. It's a nice shirt. No, uh, yeah. It's uh, it's it's a, it's an interesting target. It's very different, uh, and I've not seen too many of them, so it's nice to, you know, have a go at it. It's really good, really good. I'm excited about this one. Hmm. Hmm. I hope yeah. it's. Uh, I found the uh, editing of what I've got so far. I've done a few little sort of play edits, and it's uh, it's going to need a lot of integration. Definitely, definitely. What are you thinking, Joe? How many hours? Eight, twelve. Shut up. It's going to be 10 <laughs> times that. There's no way. You're fibbing, aren't you? I am. You caught me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here I thinking have... I've got about 30 hours and I can't see a lot. <laughs> I've So far, I've got 82 hours. Oh, man, that's crazy. It is really difficult to get anything to come out. So I'm hoping that when we combine our data together... We'll be able to get a good image. I'm sure. Be, I'm sure we'll get. Some, I'm sure we'll get something. We'll. Um, Had you go in there? Yeah, yeah, you certainly did. Yeah, yeah. Thanks ever so much for that. It's really nice. <laughs> okay, Joe. Well, that's great. So uh, use your Z81. That's 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 cool. That's cool. So um, yeah, would I just say I've got, I've got a bit more clear skies coming, so I'll get some more data, um, and then I'll send you my files, and if you send me your files. Okay. Maybe we should have a look at putting them together and see what we've got, yeah? <laughs> that sounds great. Okay, man. All right. All right. Well, we'll do that then. Cool. I'm excited. Okay, man. Uh, 
right. Well, it'd be nice to, later, to get man. something out. We haven't done anything for a little while, have we? So it's been a while. Well, apart from that little secret mission we've been working on, but you know, <laughs> we've got to we've got to get re- back in touch with the um, the Scorpio brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Hush, hush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah. Okay then, mate. All right, Clint. I'll speak to you soon. All right, All right sounds bye, good. Man. Bye. So um, the capturing of this uh, target was actually quite difficult. The um, the faintness of it uh, made it a very challenging target. Um, this is a single um, S2 sub. S2 actually was quite a strong signal, but this is a single 10 minute sub of S2, and as you can see. There's not a great amount of detail in this. I managed to capture in total around 32 and a bit hours on this target. So, um, and this is a stacked version of the S2. And as you can see, there's a lot more structure showing here. But one of the big challenges with this target was the stars. There's a lot of stars in this region. And so they really do um, uh, dominate the uh, image. Um, I even tried some 15 minute subs, which I hadn't done before. And although um, I was getting good structure, the stars were really starting to come through on that. So I just went back to the 10 minute subs and mainly concentrated on that. So um, when I removed the stars uh, for the process of editing, I used, uh, first of all, Starnet, which didn't do a particularly great job. And then the new program had come out, um, the Star Exterminator, which can be used in Photoshop or PixInsight. And initially that did a better job, but it was leaving patches all over the actual nebula itself. And it was very hard to edit them out. A great thing was an update was brought out for the Star Exterminator and that reduced that patchiness. So I was able to do a much better job on the editing. So this is what um, I came up with um, eventually with Joe and mine's data and we ended up with this really nice um, medulla nebula but it was very very cropped in on the field of view and Joe had taken a quite a nice wide field shot with his uh, Zenith Star 81. We both felt that the wide field was a much much better looking image but whenever we tried to integrate the data we had problems. Um, and uh, I had to think about it. Um, one of the biggest problems was star aligning the two images. So we had all of the data put together for the wide, we had the wide field and we had all the data put together for the uh, close up uh, cropped in version, but putting the two together was quite difficult. One of the biggest issues we had was there would be a box around the uh, field of view for the tighter image on top. And it was hard to get rid of that. What then happened was uh, Joe was talking to James from DSO Imager and James had been doing loads of data on this subject too. too. He had been using his um, 1600mm and uh, on a 70mm scope. Joe had been doing his on an 81mm uh, scope. So um, in total though, James and Joe had done an enormous amount of hours. So Joe had managed to accumulate 89 hours and James 94 hours and again had a wide field shot that looked great um, but they both felt that the uh, longer reach of my CT10 was given a bit more detail so we wanted to put all of that data together so we had a massive amount of data but putting it into one image was quite difficult. So uh, what follows is a little bit of what I was doing in Photoshop to try and get the two to blend together and then finally, I'm going to show you our uh, image of Abel 85 or the Medulla Nebula. I'm in Photoshop because this is the tool that I use to combine uh, Joe and James's wide field shot with the uh, closed in field of view shot, which was mine, Joe and James's data altogether. So, um, we could do obviously do a big close up, but we wanted the wide field finished. And uh, when Joe put them together, um, he did it in Astro Pixel Processor and it did put them together, but it left the box showing. So I'm just going to move this across. So if I go um, Control A, Control C, 
and then control V, it'll put that layer in there. So um, Joe had something in Astro Pixel Processor, it put it all together and it kind of came up with, with, with something like this. So you would you would get the two together, but you'd end up with a box around it. And it no matter what he tried, it was very difficult to, to lose the edges of the box. So I came into uh, Photoshop after aligning the two pictures together um, in uh, PixInsight. Um, I came into Photoshop with an idea of what we could do. So with um, the wide field underneath, and we've got the detail one on top, uh, I'm just going to use the erase brush. I've got the hardness set to zero so that it doesn't uh, put a, st a strong edge anywhere and I've made the brush a fairly big size and at the moment I've got the opacity set to 100% and I'm going to just start off by removing the um, outside of this uh, this image so I could mostly make the brush a little bit bigger but it's all working and then as we get to the box you'll see that it will take the edges of the box away and what we're doing is we're revealing the image that's underneath now the wide field is what we want so we're just gonna to the edge of the box and just bring all of that out and make sure that we've got a good a good bit of background and just bring that across there and this is what I did I, I'm just doing this very quickly but I spent a lot more time with the finished article so once we've got the background mainly revealed around the target what I then proceeded to do was I took the opacity down on this brush to about say 50% and slowly just work my way in what I didn't want to do is lose the detail but one of the things that that came out on the uh, image that we all did together was the center didn't have much red on it and I do like the red that we we had so bring the opacity down again to about 25% and then what you're able to do is just reveal ever so slightly what's underneath and you don't want to go too much because otherwise you lose the uh, detail on the oxygen there but what you can do is just bring a little bit of that back image through the red through and it gives a nice bit of detail and what you're ending up with is rather than that being the finish where it was all just a you can see there where the box is and you can see it brings through a lot more oxygen So when you've got it like that, it helps you to just colour it in a bit more, get rid of that, that box shape, which you don't want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to up the opacity a little bit. So as I say, I spent a lot of time when I was doing the original so that it it had a nice blend to it you can see there that's looking a lot better so what I want to do there is just bring in a little bit more red on that side And I would say that the centre just needs a little bit more. You just have got to be so careful not to lose the oxygen, though. And basically, that was how I managed to blend the two together. 
and from there we can then uh, stamp that image so it's a finished image and then we can go into camera raw and we can make some small adjustments to the final to the final image and get everything to where we finally want it I hope you enjoy it it is a very faint target um, I'm pretty sure it's something I'm going to visit again um, and have another go I'm go I, I, I've uh, got a new camera um, which is a 2600 mm pro um, which I want to get on this target unfortunately I've been really held back uh, with this camera because I've had some real issues getting the filters I want um, but I'm hoping that will soon be resolved and then I can uh, maybe have a go with this camera because I think the 16 bit um, uh, will really uh, give that uh, deeper deeper uh, dynamic range and allow me to uh, capture much more finer detail on this target and maybe get a better separation with the background but I really love what we've managed to come up with. I'm really pleased with it. It was great working with Joe as always, and it was really nice to get James on board and work with him too. So I hope you enjoy the final image. And until next time, please take care. And of course, clear skies.